Hi, it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I've got something really different for you. It's a cushion cover. Now some of you may already know I love colouring with a purpose. So if we can reuse it and send it off as a postcard or write in our journal, use it as our diary or notebook or eat dinner off our placemats, then I really like it. So colourable cushions are right up my alley. Now this cushion is from Evelyn Illustrations and that's Evelyn. She's got a store on Etsy where you can buy a range of different products from her to colour in. She has the cushions in a number of different patterns and she sent me this one which is a boho type girl. Um, so the cushions are all actually handmade by Evelyn. So not only does she hand illustrate the design, she actually makes the cushions. She actually sews them up. Um, so she's got the nice stitching here. It's white uh, material with the little closed bit over it so the hidden zipper so that you don't see that component there's nothing on the back of the cushion which is fine and we've just got the front so what do we color our cushions with so to color things like this we need to use fabric paints so we can use things like t-shirt markers that you can buy really cheaply at uh, the discount shops so I think in the UK you call it like Poundland and in the US you've got tons of discount shops and whatnot. Um, these I bought in a bargain shop in Australia and these were $4 for the t-shirt markers. Usually when you're using these types of markers, when you colour it in you have to set it with an iron afterwards but we'll talk about that later. So we've got t-shirt markers. Now our friends at Sharpie always like to be busy with anything colouring related and so they have a range of markers called stained for fabric painting and again you need to set these with an iron. Now there's not as many colours in the range as their normal uh, range but they are still you know there and they've got lots of nice uh, colours. Now in Australia there wasn't much choice I got a packet and this is what the packet looks like and it only had, um, what, two, four, six, eight colours in it. So not a lot of selection in Australia when I bought these. There might be more now. So they're the Sharpie fabric paints or fabric markers. And we'll just have a look at those. Um, so you can see that they've just got a normal tip like a Sharpie. But we can use them on fabric. Now, the other thing that we can use... is pencils. Not just any sort of pencils, but Inktense pencils. Inktense pencils are made of actual ink that is solidified and when you add water it activates it and causes a stain. So with the Inktense pencils we can use those on fabric and as long as we activate it with water then it's going to set and we don't need to use an iron to set that. So I was thinking that I would use the Inktense pencils to colour in the cushion. Now, I watch quite a lot of tattoo shows and they always talk about leaving some skin. So leaving some areas blank so that the image can breathe. So I've decided that I'm not going to colour her skin or her hair. Uh, or her hair, that's right. Um, and I'm going to colour the feathers and the headdress, headband, and these little bits here, and her eyes, and her nose. Now these smaller bits I'm actually going to use the Sharpie pens for, and these bits I'm going to use the ink tents because I want a, like a kind of dreamy look, and I played around with the colours on a photocopy of the image until I could find a colour scheme that I liked uh, for the feathers and then my husband chose the colour scheme for the headdress. So we need to get started and to do that we first of all need to take the cover out from the cushion. So I'm going to do that and return. Now the next thing I need to do is put some card in between the printed area and the back of the cushion because otherwise the colour is going to seep through 
and cause lots of problems on the back and we won't be able to get it out. It's a permanent stain, which is why I'm so nervous about doing this video because if anything goes wrong today, I've only got the one cushion cover. So um, I'm really hopeful that things are going to go according to plan. Uh, so in we go with the bit of cardboard. Now I used to do a lot of fabric painting when I was a kid um, and I used to ha actually have a fabric painting wheel uh, that you press things into and it sort of holds it taut like an embroidery thing but of course I couldn't find that um, today to do it but if you do have access to a fabric uh, circle fabric hoop um, then please use that because th that is far more effective than doing it like this. Now I'm also going to put some just plain copy paper in between there just underneath just to make doubly sure. So I'm just putting a couple of sheets of paper on top of that just to give it a bit more firmer surface and you can see by the shadow it doesn't go the whole way so I'll just move it across when I do the other areas. Now the other thing is I'm going to trim up this bit of cardboard just so that it fits in properly and I'll do that um, off screen so that you don't have to wait for me to do it. Okay, it's a really hot day in Sydney today so I've had to turn the fan on so I hope the background noise is not too annoying for you. Now I'm going to do something that might be a little bit strange and I'm going to put some glue onto the image. Now this is um, a washable glue so I just brought this one because it was the only one that was available at the shops. Um, and that fan is um, shaking my camera. That's funny. Um, so any sort of washable glue because the idea is I'm going to wash it out when I wash the cushion cover. So it's only designed for a temporary type thing. So the reason that I'm using the glue is, and you might not need to do this with every image, and I've got to be honest, I've done a ton of tests with this and it's not 100% perfect but it's sort of better than nothing. Now the reason that I'm doing this is that you guys know that um, my eyesight is just not what it used to be and I'm really worried that I'll go out of the lines here and I'll stain around the material. Now you know with intense pencils it could look quite nice but I'd like to try and avoid that if possible and I wanted to keep the hair uh, just sort of line art so by putting the glue on I'm hoping to form a barrier where if I do come close to it with the ink tents that it just sort of washes over it and doesn't stain so much. Now I've done a ton of tests and um, sometimes it works really well and sometimes it has stained over so make sure you always do your own tests first. Okay. Now a lot seems to depend on how much you put on and you know how quickly it sets so it's a really super hot day here in uh, Sydney so I'm hoping that's not going to affect things too much. So I'm going to just, uh, pour some of this out into a little plastic palette and I've got a little brush here that I'm going to use to brush it on. And so I want to make sure that it has plenty of time to dry and that um, I cover these areas. It might even involve doing two coats depending on how we go. So I'm just forming a glue border around the bits that I don't want to get stained. Okay, I've finished putting the glue on and of course I forgot to put my glasses on to actually see what I was doing so hopefully I got it in the right spot. Um, now we're going to let it dry. Now depending where you are and what your temperature is like and whatnot, this might take you 10 minutes or it might take you even overnight if you're in a really cold country and depending on how much glue you lay it on. And remember what I said, it's not always 100% accurate so do test it out on some scraps of material first and uh, sort of get your consistency right before you give this a try. Obviously if your eyesight is better than mine um, then you know go for it without the glue. Now normally I would use my magnifying lamp but because I'm filming um, I can't really sort of fit 
both of the things in with the camera. So something had to give uh, and it was a magnifying lamp. So we're going to let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll get on to colouring it in. The glue's dried on my cushion cover and um, you can tell that by just sort of feeling it. It feels sort of hard. So what I'm trying to achieve is a little barrier so that if I do go a little bit out of the lines it'll just uh, get stuck before the glue and it sort of won't run onto the white material. Although I do think it would look kind of nice with like a little bit of staining around it. But some people might not like that look. So let's get started. So we're going to use the Inktense pencils. And um, I've got a set of 12 here. And I've already selected some colours because I tested out how I wanted it to look on a spare bit of uh, paper earlier. So I've got uh, sea blue and apple green. And I'm going to use some pink and maybe some yellow and also some green. So I've got some others there as well. Now because these are little tiny feathers, you do need to make sure that your pencil is a little bit sharp. Not as sharp as you would normally just for sort of colouring in. This one's a bit blunt but um, I think, you know, it'll be okay. So ink tents, when you're using them, you can use them on fabric, but it must be activated. So meaning it must be wetted, because otherwise when you wash this, it's going to get activated in the washing machine and it's going to stain everything um, different colours. So you can just, you know, have some fun with this. If you're really neat and tidy, you might want to do each individual feather. Um, I wanted a sort of dreamy look, uh, so I'm just going to do some random little colours on here. Now, um, as most of you guys know from my funny way of talking, I live in Australia and it's kind of hot here. At the moment, it's coming on to summer and it's getting a little bit warm. And the reason that I tell you that is that um, things dry really quickly when they're super warm. So I'm going to do something with my intense pencils that you may not need to do in your country or depending on your climate. So I've just added a little bit of blue to the feathers there with the intense pencil and we can go over it again we don't need to just do one layer and that's sort of it you can go over it when it's wet or you can go over it when it's dry now I do recommend that you test this out on a bit of fabric first um, which is what I did and I also check tested it out my color scheme as well because once it's on there it's on there so what I'm going to do which might be something that you may not need to do in other countries is I'm going to activate my Inktense pencils not with complete water I'm going to use aloe vera gel and I know that sounds sort of weird um, but the reason that I'm using it is that water is incredibly runny and it will run all over the place and you'll have to be super careful with your strokes that it doesn't run out into the bits that you don't want coloured in. Um, whereas you can use a fabric medium that you can buy from like a craft shop or an art shop but the poor man's fabric medium is um, aloe vera gel and I know that sounds a little bit weird. Now because it's quite hot in Australia I need to make my aloe vera gel a little bit slushier you might not need to in your country because at the moment it's quite thick and the heat will sort of dry it um, especially as I haven't got the fan on because I'm filming and I didn't want you guys to hear that rattle so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to my gel and try not to bump the camera too much while I'm doing this and give it a bit of a stir around 
Now you could just use straight water, you could use a fabric medium, or you could use the aloe vera gel on its own, or you could do the aloe vera gel smushed up with a bit of water like I'm doing, um, just to make it a little bit runnier. Now the whole reason that I'm doing this whole gel thing or the fabric medium is so that it doesn't run too much when you start to colour in because if I just used water um, it would be hard to manage and because these are delicate little feathers it's going to go everywhere. Now if you've got something bigger like say the headdress and you just want to colour the whole thing then I could use water there quite easily or skin colour over here and we could just use water and it'd be fine but I do want to try and keep the feathers a little bit separate so that's why I'm trying to control the activation as much as I can. So before we um, move on a little bit I'm going to add some more colour to our feathers and I used the blue earlier and so now I'm just going to dab in a little bit of green here and there and if it's not what you like you can always go back and add some more. And the great thing about this is that you don't have to be a delicate little flower especially if you're going for a sort of dreamy look which is what I wanted because it's the boho girl so I wanted a sort of dreamy look and also because I'm not very coordinated and this is one way of me being able to get between my imaginary lines. <laughs> you press harder on the pencil for however um, if you want more colour or lighter if you want less colour. Best to put on lighter first and you can always add more later. So we can brush this on with either just a little paintbrush or you can use a water barrel brush take the water out of it if you're using my aloe vera method unless you want to um, use the aloe vera on its own and then just use the water barrel to give it more uh, liquidity if you need that. I'm just going to use this little paint brush it's just a little cheap thing from the discount shop and just dab a bit of the aloe vera mix with the paintbrush. So because we're the dreamy look we can sort of be a little bit rough and you see it changing colours here. Now because I've um, changed colours and I don't want that colour transferring over to that colour I'm just going to rinse my brush in a little bit of water and I have some kitchen towel here that I'm just going to blot it on. So just a little bit of kitchen towel. Let's make sure it comes clean. And then I'll move on to the next feathers. So you can see we're sort of getting a dreamy finish with um, lots of vibrant colour on it. Uh, now don't worry that there's white bits still there, I left them there on purpose. So I'll just keep continuing around and each time I change colour I'm just uh, washing out my brush in my little cup of water and blotting it on the paper towel that I brought. Now, I do have to say that this is a project that terrifies me because I do only have the one cushion and I'm really worried that I'll mess up Evelyn's cushion so I'm feeling under a lot of pressure.
The idea is push the colour around a little bit so it fills depending on how light or dark that you want it. So some areas I'm purposely leaving light because I want to put another layer of colour over it. You see, if I was trying to get into these little bits here on the edge with water, the water would be staining out down the side unless you've got super control. Whereas with using this aloe vera, it's making it thicker and just so much easier to manage. Now, of course, this would be way easier for you guys at home to do this because you don't have a camera in your way. So just bear that in mind in case you think it's taking a long time or whatnot. It's way easier if you're not checking a camera and moving around all the time. And you can put the pencils over the wet if you feel you need to add some more colour. Or you can wait till it's dry. That's the beauty of using these products. When it goes on wet, it goes on like a, an absolute dream. Because it's quite hot here today, my little mix of aloe vera and water is sort of drying out. So off screen I've been adding a little bit more water to it um, just so it has the consistency that I'm happy with that it moves it around without moving it too much um, and causing me to go out of the lines. Now don't worry if it looks a little bit blotchy in some areas, we'll be going back around and adding to it. and the glue hasn't worked a hundred percent there and I've got a little bit of staining on there which is a shame but it feels like it's on top of the glue so it may well come out when I wash it but that's what I was frightened of but I still think with this design that a little bit of staining won't really matter that much because it'll look kind of dreamy and cute like a background. And Evelyn has a range of these designs. Some would be um, better for Sharpies and some would be better for intense pencils or whatever you fancy. Now this one's going to be harder because it's got so many black lines already on it that it's sort of pretty well guaranteed that I'm going to go out of the lines um, because it's really quite fine. So what I'm just going to do is just wash over some colour um, and knowing that it will go out of the lines but be quite happy about that sort of look and I'm not going to worry. And remember we're here to have fun. So. And I really like the look of intense pencils, um, the stain and that whole dreaminess and the way you get all the different tones depending on how much water or activation you add. Now I've never tried the fabric medium um, but I imagine it would work in a similar fashion to this aloe vera so you can just use whatever you have to hand I just got my husband to pick that up from the shops for me. So it's uh, nothing special or anything fancy, just something from the local supermarket. And because I put that green over the already wet fabric from the aloe vera, it goes a lot darker. So this is how you can change the look of the colours that you've got. It's just by adding more colour to deepen it. So colouring that in virtually like a pencil. Or adding less colour like this just by lightly putting it on. And if you haven't got enough colour just come back and add some more. 
it doesn't need to be dry, you can do it either wet or dry. And I've just realised I've missed a feather. Now other than the tests that I've done, this is only the first time that I've used Intense Pencils on fabric. So there's probably heaps of tips and tricks that people that are more experienced with using it would be able to tell you or would do it that uh, make the actual Intense Pencils. But my husband's lost a lot of shirts in my um, little testing ground. Um, I've been using up all his old shirts, testing things on. I remember you can uh, blend up colours just like your normal pencils. So I'm just using the 12 pack here. And the great thing is that you don't need to be super careful the the look that you get with intense is sort of like silk painting it's sort of dreamy and you know you can create all these lovely looks without feeling too uh, perfectionist about it and of course you can do whatever color scheme that you want it doesn't have to look like a peacock it can be whatever you want which is the great thing about coloring And I've moved this green out of the lines a little bit because I sort of want it to look dreamier. And because it's a hot day here in Sydney, this is already dry and that's why it's not looking um, as bright on camera as when you see it when it goes on wet. Now I don't want to go overboard with the yellow, so I'm just adding it here and there. And then I'll come back and work out what other colours I want to add in, so that I get that sort of dreamy look that I was looking for. And see when it does go out, and maybe I didn't have enough glue on there, I don't know. But see how that stain forms, so that's what would happen if you were using um, water, you'd have that stain everywhere. Um, because we're using the aloe vera, it's not as bad, and I had hoped that the glue would work better, but it hasn't. Or not on that bit and as I said you know heaps of tests and you know I really couldn't find a magic formula um, when it did work all the time and also I didn't have any of this fabric to test on it so I was testing it on you know my husband's shirts <laughs> Now I don't want to add my other colours at this stage um, because first of all I want to see what it looks like when the yellow activates um, and second of all I don't want it to go all muddy when I activate the yellow. And this is where one of those fabric hoops really comes in handy because it holds the material taut for you 
whereas doing it this way you don't have that tautness and unless you can put it sort of put your hand on it the material can rumple up so try and keep it as taut as possible with your hand if you don't have a fabric painting hoop okay so now it's time to activate the yellow so just like before we grab out our paintbrush, make sure it's clean, give it a dry on your bit of paper towel and then um, dab it into your mix of either fabric medium, water or fabric medium and water. Now you can use also your water barrel um, things um, but you'll see when I do this see how quickly it dissolves you have to be really light and with other images that would be um, great but with feathers um, and I don't see that well it's you know probably not going to be as easy to keep control but you can certainly use your water barrel just use whatever you're comfortable with and remember when you're using the water is going to wet the material more so it will take longer to dry so just and also make sure that you've got that um, packing in between it so that you don't stain the back but we may as well we've got the water brush out we may as well just continue with the water and as I said it's such a hot day here in Sydney that my um, aloe vera mix is just drying out I'm having to keep adding water to it all the time so I'm trying to stay away from the lines and just push it through now the thing with the water that I noticed from my tests So I had to change the camera so I've been gone and uh, before I left we were using the yellow pencil and the water barrel to add in some colours. Now if you're going to use the water barrel on fabric I would um, try and use it on an image where it's larger and allow like at least three mil for it to bleed out because when you put it on it looks great when you've put it on and it looks fabulous and it's all within the lines and then you come back you know five minutes later and it's all seeping out and beyond where you've put it so just be wary that with the water barrel you just don't have as much control so it's great if you wanted to use it as like a color wash over a big area but for something like feathers it's going to be too hard to keep it within the lines unless you you know you're super um, skilled and whatnot I'm not so <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to my um, brush with the aloe vera on it and I'm just going to just keep adding little bits of yellow in here and um, then I'll come back and I'll add in my extra colours and that's the beauty of the intense is that you can just keep building it up however you like and just keep adding it and all the rest of it Okay, so we've finished round one of the feathers and you can see that there's a lot of little uh, bits that are white still etc and that's because I want to go in and do another layer over it. But I think we've got the sort of dreamy look that I was aiming for. There's a few uh, mistakes on there and whatnot, but I think, you know, it doesn't really matter that much. So I just want to add a few little highlights and um, again try and keep this material as taut as possible. And I left some little white spaces here so that the yellow would stand out a little bit more when I put it in after.
Okay, so I finished adding in my yellow and now I'm going to go in and just sharpen up all of these edges here where I haven't um, gone right to the ends and there's a bit of white space. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my pencils sharpened to a fine point so that I can get to that space. So I'll just pause the video while I get my sharpener out. Okay, so now I've got my pencils back to a fine point. And um, actually, I just want to share this with you. I've got a ton of pencil sharpness, and the one that I've found to be working the best for me lately is one that I bought from the art shop for $2. It's a Stedler one, and it's the cheapest one that I own, and it's been the best one so far. So I'm just going to add in some colour where I need it. And because I'm so forgetful, I'm going to make sure I splash this colour around uh, right now rather than come back and do it later. Now, the darker you go with your pencil, the more vibrant the colour is going to be. So if you just want to dash, then just put it on lightly. I'm putting it on quite heavily. And then I'm just using my mix. And pushing it around with the aloe vera mix on my brush. And I've not added as much water to this lot. Um, because first of all, it's now cooler in Sydney. So it's not um, drying out as quickly. And secondly... Um, because it's such a little fine itty bitty point um, I don't want it slushing around too much so I've just made it quite thick with the aloe vera so only a tiny tiny bit of water is in there and you will have to you know fiddle about with scraps of material and whatnot and work out what works well with the way you use the brush and what sort of implements you like So I'm going to add a little bit of green down here and just in the point lightly. And you can just add the colours that you see that you need more of and just keep building it up as you would with one of your pictures in your colouring books. Just remember to make sure the aloe vera or the water mix, whatever you're using, goes over all of it because otherwise it's not activated. Now I did have a thought in the middle of the night about the little bit of bleeding over on the top part of the picture and um, I remember the ink tents make a white pencil so I was going to give it a try later with the white pencil which is not in the 12 set um, pack that I've got um, but I do have a white pencil because I do actually have the larger set of ink tents I bought them when they were on special um, but I haven't actually used them as yet because I find that these 12 um, have been just fine and dandy for what I've used so far. When I crack open that 72 pack, it's going to be like Christmas. And you really have to hold the fabric taut unless you've got one of those fantastic embroider uh, embroidery hoops or fabric hoops that I used to have as a kid. Man, I am wishing that back right now because it held the material so taut it made it so much easier to colour. And so then we're just going to go around the whole of the picture and do the same thing. And just keep adding in the extra strokes or layer of pencils 
wherever you feel that you need a bit more colour so you can see how vibrant it is in some areas and how I've left it like a little bit less in others to get that sort of dreamy look that I was after so hopefully I'm achieving that so I'm going to pause the camera and go around and do each and every feather um, because it would uh, take too long on camera to show you all um, and then I'll come back and show you the next step so in order to save some time um, I've gone through and I've coloured in all of the little bits that were missing um, etc on the feathers now you may also have noticed remember when I made that um, it seeped around here on this feather so what I thought was I'll get my white intense pencil out and I'll see if I can actually stain it white um, in those areas that it seeped in now I've only done one layer of color and so there's still a tinge of blue shining through but if I do another layer of white I think that I'll be able to sort of clean up that mistake there just by staining it white now the white intense pencil is not in the pack of 12 but I do actually have the pack of 72 so I cracked it open so I could use the white pencil now I've also colored in um, the orange here and I've left the stitching marks because I'm going to go over those in Sharpie and I need to activate that pencil and what I'm doing here is in the red uh, intense pencil I'm just going to do a color wash over here and maybe add some Sharpie to it afterwards and this one I'll do in the orange as well and do that black or maybe pink I can't remember what um, hubby told me the colors to use and um, I can't remember what he said now um, so I'm going to go through and wash this one with the red Okay, and now we'll activate it to make sure our brush is clean. So I'll just finish doing the rest of this off camera. Now I could add more colours to it if I wanted to and blend something in or whatnot. Um, but I'm just going to leave it with the orange but I'm going to add more orange because it's still not as vibrant as I want. So even when it's wet or whether it's dry you can still add in more ink tints. When it's wet it feels really good going over it. And you still need to activate this second layer of ink tents, so we still need to go over it. Now if you're using the ink tents blocks, you can either grate it into a, like a palette dish and activate it with water, use it like a watercolour, or you can um, use it on the tip of your brush like, um, like this, but instead you're using it with the block always do that if you just need a little bit 
or you can run the whole block over the image or the area that you want to colour. On something like this, um, it wouldn't be good because there's a lot of fine detail unless you were actually um, colour washing the whole thing. So I'm going to continue through. I'm going to colour all the rest of this in and activate it. So I've added in more orange and now it's a matter of activating that. And so as usual, clean your brush and add in some more aloe vera or water, whatever you're working with. And depending on how much pigment you've put down or how much ink you've put down, depends on your final result on how bright it's going to be. If you want it brighter like I wanted it, then you just go back and add more. Now if you're using the aloe vera like I am, make sure you change it um, so when you keep dipping it in uh, for doing the blues and the greens etc, it'll stain the aloe vera that's in there. So make sure you've got a fresh lot for like your orange so you're not dipping it into blue and green and other colours that you might have used already. I'm going to go through and finish the rest of this activation off camera and then we'll come back and do the red bit. So the orange is all activated so now it's time to do the red and um, because it's such a vast area we could actually use water there and just sort of remember that it will seep a little bit. Um, so I might just get my um, water barrel out and uh, we can use that. And this will make it a lot quicker and we're just doing a wash with this because it's already got pattern in it that Evelyn has put in the design. Now I'm just avoiding the edges here because first of all I know that the water is going to, see how it's seeping into that colour area there? It's going to seep everywhere um, and I don't want it to seep too much into my pink bit. And um, I will, around the edge bit, I will use the aloe vera to try and get a little bit more control. But you can see how fast that is. So if you've got something that you want just washed, colour washed over, then you can just use the water brush like I did then. And now that it's wet, we might want to put some more colour into it. So um, I'll just get my red pencil out again and give it a bit more. Now it's already got this um, pattern in it and I was thinking that I might just add some highlights with Sharpies um, but not too sure. Now what I did forget to do was move that bit of cardboard over and so I ended up with a little ridge there when I was colouring. Ooh. And I've also just stuck my hand into the pink. So obviously be careful of your hands when you're doing this that you're not moving stain onto other areas and in um, retrospect um, what I should have done is put some sticky tape over there so I'm going to have to give her some hair or something there to cover that. Okay, so when I used the water brush over here, what happened was it actually seeped all across over to here and into my pink and actually onto her forehead, which I put some Inktense pencil on. Um, so I've had two seepages now, so I'm kind of learning my lesson not to use the water brush on a finely detailed picture like this and just to go back and use my aloe vera brush. So now because of course this has got this seepage in it, I'm going to add a little bit more colour and leave it as that colour wash. But um, learn from my mistake, don't use the water brush even when it's far away because it will sink and it's gone into her hair and um, sort of everywhere. And it looks fine when it goes on, it's only like a few minutes later because it gradually starts seeping and it's seeped all down to here on her forehead and I had to use that white intense pencil several times um, to try and get it out. So um, when for my mistake, use the aloe vera or a um, fabric medium. So this is the first time I've done this. Uh, so, you know, it's probably not the best picture to do it with, you know, something less detailed with the intense pencils. But if it is going to be detailed, you know, learn from me, use the 
medium or the um, aloe vera and next time what I would do as well is my glue worked for some of the feathers and some of the things that I put it on but it didn't work for all of them so it didn't work around here on the forehead and it didn't work on those feathers up there that I had to add that white to so um, maybe put some sticky tape or something as well or um, some sort of masks that you might be able to buy from the art shop uh, to protect those other layers because I think you can get a fabric mask um, I just don't have an art shop near me um, so yeah learn from those mistakes and I'm gonna just add a little bit of uh, sort of pinky red over here and um, sort of give that a <laughs> give that a fix up so I think it kind of looks nice sort of this antique -y look anyway um, and I was after a dreamy look I just didn't expect um, to sort of turn my head and um, have a cup of tea and find uh, you know that it's um, seeped everywhere but you know never mind the beauty of ink tents I think is that it looks great um, anyway even when you do make little whoopsies and as I said practice on material first and you know try and try and get a material that's similar to what you're going to work with I still think that looks kind of nice um, you know um, but you know see what you think in the end now with that seepage it also went into my stitching that I didn't want but that's okay because the black sharpie will go over it so that's all good and it's sort of gone into a hair a bit um, I noticed a little bit pink over there which is cool too you know everyone's dying the hair now with little bits of pink and whatnot um, so she's sort of like a trendy girl now so that's all good so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to colour in these love hearts uh, on her cheeks and I'm just going to use the sharpies for that. Um, I'm just going to do all purple. As can you see um, it, it's moving outside the lines so we need to make sure our sharpie strokes and no matter how many times you do this on practice material um, when you're doing it in real life it's never going to be the same so just do one line and see it's um, see it slowly seeping across it moves it gradually moves so don't go all the way to the edges that's a lesson I just learnt from there so for here just go there and it's going to seep across and here and here and here so it's it's actually seeping just like the um, just be careful with that you can't um, it sort of doesn't make any difference it does look nice still either way so just learn from my mistakes here don't go right to the edge um, and this is my problem when I was practicing None of the things had an outline on them, so I didn't quite realise how much the sharpies seep. So try and keep it a couple of mils away from the outline. So don't go to the black, go a couple of mil underneath. Um, so with this eye, we're going to make that uh, blue. So see how much it's moving? Just with one stroke, so it really seeps going to put some little dots in there because it's moving around so much and I'm just going down the bottom here I'm putting the purple dots on because it does seep and it's going to seep over and we might just do a color wash over there with the ink tents and what I have learned is ink tents and water barrel for small areas and no no so I think uh, we'll put a little pink uh, choker on her and um, obviously I've learnt my mistake and I'm not going to use the water barrel down here because it's going to go everywhere and it's back to aloe vera for me okay and there's our finished lady um, now, 
uh, there's you know lots of mistakes obviously um, but we've also learned a few things while well, I have it anyway um, so first of all make sure you allow lots of space with the sharpies because they do bleed um, also make sure that you as well as using the glue because it didn't work a hundred percent of the time um, make sure you also use maybe masking tape or sticky tape or something practice um, first of all you know as many times as you can preferably on a material that's similar to what you used and use outlines because if I'd used outlines just rather than going straight to the material I would have realized how much my sharpies actually seep um, and you know just use small amounts and add in a fabric medium or aloe vera uh, to get a little bit more control over things okay so I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you find another use for your intense pencils until next time happy coloring